Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Wednesday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about NVIDIA Jetson Nano. So let's dive right into it. So first thing you have to understand what we are talking about when we are talking about Raspberry Pi or uh, other things like that, we are talking about self-contained system. Now if you are familiar with computer, you must understand that there is processor, there is RAM, there is graphics card, there is modem, hundreds of things, they are all separated out. When we are talking about self-contained system, it is generally put packed all of those things in as small package as possible. So you must be aware of Chiron systems, you must be aware of A9, Exynos, uh, Snapdragon 800, all those things, basically they are system of chain what does that mean system on chip basically as many things that is uh, you know small things are there that can be cramped into the system they will cramp it basically let's say you have a processor that's dedicated for fingerprint management it will be put into the processor you have uh, basically wi-fi uh, router uh, programming system uh, basically uh, uh, your router also has a uh, basically processor core a small one but it has it that will be also put into the system in system you have graphics card that will be also put into the system you have processing unit central processing you, that will be also put into it you have mobile network configuration system that will also require a process you will also put that in so this is what we classify as system on chip the only thing we generally try to keep out of system of chip is generally ram modules there are two primary reasons for first is physically way too big second uh, when you're talking about uh, uh, ram on uh, basically ram things company want to control it basically if you uh, buying any samsung mobile phone or any other things like that even apple you will be like okay 2 gb variant 4 gb variant or in case of uh, apple there would be like okay 32 60 16 and things like that so that is why some things are not kept into the chip itself they can do it they just don't want to it because it's a very demanding physically and they want to give manufacturers option so this is why we have system on chip this is what you have in your router this is what you have like of course high-end professional router i'm not talking about a router that is in your home that's a very low end so uh, cisco router that are used in enterprise grade, which has a, like a freaking ai into it to uh, figure out uh, how, even if you are using vpn it can uh, you know predict the traffic whether it's a virus or not so those kind of system requires a full fully integrated computer and when you are talking about that is system on chip when you are talking about single board computer you are talking about raspberry pi basically they took this and sorted it in as small board as possible so you will have your input output power management all of that in one board raspberry pi now there is a bridge between these two because you can understand what if you don't want usb ports in your uh, basically raspberry pi all you want is ethernet uh, let's say you are making a router or spf uh, pf routers something like that so you can check my video here if you are doing something like that you don't need USB port, but you need Ethernet. You can't change it here. However, to bridge that gap, basically taking a chip and directly soldering it out uh, or buying this and modifying this, somebody came up with this idea, which we call system on module. Now, this is becoming very popular in recent years because uh, there are many things that upgrade very slowly and other things that upgrade very fast. So let's say your computer module, that's upgrading very quickly nowadays. However, let's say you are making a TV. If you are making a good like uh, let's say a panel that is 4k 60 fps good color dynamic and all that you want to keep selling that for let, let's say another five to six years however the computer and processor they are keep getting uh, you know upgraded very quickly so what you will do in your uh, basically motherboard of the basically your tv you will have a module place where you're just gonna plug the module so let's say you will use one module for two years and then let's say market competition is catching up you will change the module itself you will not touch the system you will just plug the system up place the new system in and this is not like a processor uh, slot because it has everything on it basically from ram to processor to graphics card all of the things basically this is a bridge between a uh, single board computer and system on chip so this is system on chip made into a module so you can just flag on uh, you know put it into the system whatever you want so you can buy 2 gb variant 4 gb variant you may buy, uh, buy a variant that has very high-end graphics other time you may buy something else so this is what we are talking about when we are talking about nvidia uh, jetson nano the system on module so what the heck is this system uh, nvidia basically nvidia is jumping seriously into ai so they want to uh, you know entice people into their platform so the price of this nvidia jetson jetson is an old system now when i say old it's not like you know uh, it's more like an architecture they have been developing in the background now early days the platform cost was like 300 dollars to twenty thousand dollars. so you can understand many people were like yeah we can't test that even university had hard time to you know grasp it so they're taking a lesson from raspberry pi they created a development system for hundred dollar now this is very amazing because what they are doing is they have the module and they have development kit so they are selling both of this so it's not like you're getting one without the other you are getting the whole package you are buying this and you are uh, you basically have a system on chip 
on your development board so you can develop whatever you want this board itself will give you the pin out so that's why it has four understand four usb 3.0 ports and uh, it, uh, dual display output it has display port and hdmi full size you don't need adapter for that G ethernet system and gpio pin so if you have like let's say leds for display uh, status display you can take care of that it also accepts a camera for direct camera integration for let's say you want object recognition and things of that nature so that is what nvidia is doing so at this point in time at this cost this is the cheapest high-end system you can get for AI researching. So whenever you uh, hear people say like in like you know Apple conference or Hawaii conference where they are talking about like this pro processor has neural engine, neural core, neural network processor. This is what they are talking about. So at this point in time for consumer like from you and me, this is the best option we have if you want to learn about those things, if you want to develop your deep neural networking abilities. Now to give you a context of its capability, how much uh, capable it is because the price is not that drastic especially if you are talking about uh, basically 4GB variant. This is also 4GB. So 4GB variant is like $55. This is $100. So it's not that much. However, when you are talking about flops, basically how much crunching, number crunching it can do. Uh, Raspberry Pi 3 is rated. So 3 only goes, uh, 3 plus only goes up to 6 to 7 giga flops. However, let's assume uh, that uh, Raspberry Pi 4 is very high power. Under no circumstances that can exceed 20 giga flops. 20. This puppy goes to 472 gigaflops. It's almost half tera, uh, basically teraflops. To give you a context, that's a uh, GTX 1070 kind of power. Now, of course, one generation back because GTX 1070, I think it's like 1.5 teraflops. So you can understand, this is like literally a full end desktop grid processing power. Like in terms of uh, many low end uh, uh, basically laptops have that kind of power. So it's really powerful and given the fact that it only requires 10 watt at maximum performance so that also means this another fact that it is very efficient with that power so let's say you built a laptop for something this will not drain your battery very quickly compared to raspberry pi because it's much more efficient with the power the power is very high so even though price is only twice as uh, you know high or even three times if you are buying a very cheap version and it does come with 4 gb nv ram on that nvram is very critical aspect because you're not supposed to basically sell products with this thing uh, basically the kit that you can buy from amazon or anywhere like that what you're supposed to do is once you have built your thing basically you figure out the module you did the coding you use this you built your own pcb that you're gonna sell you're gonna go with nvidia it's like hey nvidia i need like let's say 800 of those modules so what will nvidia do is like give you a cheaper module that module will not have sd card into it the reason for that uh, nvidia is using nvram so nvram the ram itself is permanent 4g of permanent RAM so that will give you a very quick startup and uh, uh, slow down and you don't have to worry about uh, memory basically and those will be cheaper because if you're buying let's say 800 of that Nvidia will give you a bit of discount if you're buying 10 20,000 or 30,000 of that for let's say you're making an Amazon warehouse robot they, they are like ordering in 50,000 or 60,000 like that in those sort of scenario Nvidia will give you a bulk discount so that is the whole point of this the module So why the hell NVIDIA is doing this? Why? Like why the, if you have such a, a big community, because there are many competitors of Raspberry Pi and almost all of them have failed, even from ASUS, simply because you need community. When you're talking about tinkering, when you're talking about like, you know, developing something, you need community. The sole reason Neelix is such a powerful system is simply because there are so many people pouring their heart and soul into it. That's why VLC is so popular, uh, you know, popular and powerful. So this, is trying to do that for AI. If right now, if you want to do AI, you have two options. You simulate, like you buy a very powerful computer and stimulate it, uh, like stimulate, I'm saying, uh, simulate it uh, AI core in a virtual world. Th that does work. If you have powerful computer, that's awesome. However, that powerful computer can be like, you know, uh, you can literally overpower it by using few watts of power if you have dedicated neural core. That's why Intel also is jumping into this. Intel also released, if you are familiar with this, few, uh, I think one year ago, the uh, USB stick that was computer, compute core in a USB stick. This is like a full computer with com compute, uh, neural network. So if you want to learn, understand how the heck deep neural network work, this is the best tool for you right now. As, at this point in time, this is the best tool. And to give you a context, NVIDIA already is providing developer kit. They have a neural network that is pre-trained. So you don't have to worry about training. And if you just want to see the output of it, uh, you can just feed it in the image using a camera or direct image itself. And it will tell you it's a dog, it's a boy, or it's a wooden spoon or things of that nature. I have provided a video down below. You can check that out for yourself. So it's a really good 
uh, tool for those side of understanding. If you really want to understand how the heck, uh, let's say, if you're thinking about AI, you must be thinking about like big computers, big processors, and does take that if you're doing it in your computer. But when you're talking about dedicated processors that are built for that, it's surprisingly different. Like it's like to do same task on a computer, it takes like, let's say 50 watts. To do on a chip, it takes barely one watt. So that is why. And it also has GPU parallelism. So you have to understand it has like 128 CUDA cores. So it's a really uh, large amount of parallelization. And if you can parallelize for 128, you can really, you know, uh, utilize much more things than that because there's the upper versions of these things also. So, and this image recognition system, they pre-built it. So you can run directly jump into the fray, train the network, and then, uh, you know, develop, uh, develop a neural network that you can send to other things or, you know, buy the more modules and build a product out of it. So to give you a utilization, like how these sort of technology is being utilized, uh, one of these technologies is this drone. Now, the funny thing about this drone is completely autonomous and it's autonomous not by using ultrasound or things of that nature. It's autonomous by using cameras. It has dual navigational camera. Now, you're not supposed to uh, see the video out of it. What these black and white camera is doing, it's making a 360 3D uh, sphere and drone is utilizing this to you know avoid tree branches because you must be familiar with the fact that uh, ultrasound is very good for telling where the ground is but it can't do much about in terms of uh, basically tree branches and forest but this can navigate that now when the developers were building this they were like you know computer itself waits so much that uh, uh, they are like 15 20 minutes of uh, run time is reduced because of the weight of the computer so you have to understand that these sort of technology requires ai understanding and integrated processor you can't like you know the AI that you build for your PC will not work on this. You have to have something dedicated. So this sort of implication, there are some uh, companies that are building guard dogs basically using AI itself. So it can do facial recognition. So uh, customers will not get harassed, but like somebody is coming from, uh, uh, let's say somebody's face is run through a facial match from criminal record and criminal records for them. So these will stop them. So you need a basically AI processing for that. Can Raspberry Pi build a dog? Yes. Can Raspberry Pi facial recognition? No. That's the whole point. As you can see, this is the whole point of this. Image recognition, GPU parallelism, and deep neural networks. If you want to learn those things, like high-end, basically current-gen technology, you have to have this. So let's talk about the uses of this. Like uh, first thing, foremost, the biggest warning anybody is gonna give you, it's not a better uh, Raspberry Pi. So if you think, okay, uh, there is a Raspberry Pi, I want to buy a better Raspberry Pi, this is not it. Can you use it as a computer? Yes. Can you use it as a better Raspberry Pi? Yes. But you have to understand it does not have community. So if you are having, let's say, GPUI pin header issue, and you are like, hey, I want to put a real time clock into this, the compiler may not work. So you have to understand this. It does not have a community with it. Like, of course, there is a community, there are people working there, and NVIDIA itself is pouring enough money that they, they are developing very good tools with it. But there is not a big community. Like if a Raspberry community has like, let's say 10 million users, this barely has one, one million, barely. So, and you have to understand those people are like from university or that, so they are not making large YouTube videos. So it's not that. However, if you truly want to understand AI, you have to have something like this. As of now, this is the only option. And this is the path for autonomous vehicles. So if you see people like showing how AI car sees the uh, AI, uh, sees the car to make a decision, you must have seen something like this. Like it makes a box, it's like, okay, this is a big car, heavy car, uh, slow down rate distance, all that. How those things are happening? Those are happening something like uh, Jetson. Now you can buy even higher version, basically 10 teraflop version, which is like a much more powerful than any computer right now, common use computer. So you can buy this and these are actually used in actual autonomous car. So let that sink in. So that is why Nvidia is making such a good, uh, like, you know, small uh, form factor system for you. So like they, they want you, you to buy it. They want you to learn it. And once, uh, let's say you are making your car company or you are working somewhere else, uh, you can say, hey, buy Nvidia system. I'm familiar with that. Or like say there is much more room, like developed codes for Nvidia system, just use that. So Nvidia is like playing from all sides. They have a high end system, which uh, like, you know, let's say you are making something, uh, let's say China's uh, facial recognition system, you can utilize high end one. You want to do just facial recognition for let's say 50 people or 60 people, you can utilize the small one. Or, and you can already see, yeah, like already to, like Amazon robots are already powered by something like this and sometimes they are directly using uh, this processors. So this is what the use case of it. It's not meant for like, okay, I'm gonna turn on a LED or turn off a LED. That's not what's meant for. Like you can do those things undeniably. So you, can you use this as a computer? Absolutely. It's much more uh, basically usable, practical. In practical terms, you can use it much more efficiently than a Raspberry Pi. However, it's still not a Windows environment. Still has a Linux environment and still has a lower, uh, different architecture. So you must not think of it as that. 
Can you use it? Yes, but you are just wasting money at that point. So that is the use of it. You want to learn AI, you want to learn how autonomous vehicle works, please buy this. If you want to, if you have some other tool that you are using, please tell me in the comments below. So this was my presentation about uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button. If you didn't like it you did, and also hated it, you can press the dislike button. I would urge you to press this twice to show me your extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.